Hello ladies and gentlemen, Marauder EX here, back with a new LP, and this really isn't a new LP, uh, Castlevania Curse of Darkness. Uh, if you've been subscribed to my channel for a while, you'll know I've done this before, but the cra the quality was crap, so I want to redo it. Starting off with the opening video, so enjoy. Not a very long opening movie, but quick and to the point nonetheless, so we are going to go ahead and start a new game. And this time I'm going to spell my name right. <laughs> so you just watched my uh, Limit of Innocence. Yeah, I spelled my own name wrong. M-A-R-A-U. There's a U. D-E-R. Marauder! That's what I do. And this one I can actually put E-X, so I'm actually going to do that to distinguish my last playthroughs and this playthrough, because my last playthrough was Marauder, and I'm just going to be saving over most of my old files, but this this will determine, because I, I can actually fit Marauder EX, and because I have a a, uh, a save file that is cleared, uh, we can play on the crazy difficulty or play as Trevor, so those are going to be things that I will uh, show off in the uh, at the end of the LP, as I usually do. So yeah. We are good with this, and we will save. That was my last, those two were my last LP, so I'm actually going to save it over my personal, because why, why do I need, I mean, I play it, that's, I think those were, those were my first playthroughs of it, and, uh, they then became trial and error for certain things. Well, yeah, Curse of Darkness, interesting game, was released on the PS2 and the... 1476, oh, voice acting. A great war raged between Dracula and humanity. Just when it seemed that there was no hope for mankind to prevail, out of the darkness and despair, a champion arose. A true-blooded vampire hunter named Trevor Belmont. Belmont and his comrades triumphantly slew Lord Dracula. A truly glorious victory for all. However, the Evil One did not pass from this world in silence. With his final words, Lord Dracula left a demonic curse that enshrouded all of Europe in misery and torment. Ravaged by hideous plague and dire famine, the people's hearts turned black and murderous. The weak were slain without pity, while the land was pillaged and scourged without remorse. Three years have passed since the death of Lord Dracula, and the invocation of Dracula's curse. Alright, so if you were following, this takes place directly after Castlevania III, Dracula's Curse, hence the Dracula's Curse. But we do not play as Trevor Belmont to start off, because obviously we have to beat the game to unlock it. We play as someone else. We play as this man. Show yourself, Isaac! I know you're here! Hector! Is that you? I finally tracked you down. <laughs> you tracked me down. <laughs> I was the one who lured you here. Hector, the fool who betrayed our Lord Dracula. That matters not. I've come to exact my revenge upon you. For the death of Rosalie! Oh, and how will you have this revenge? <laughs> 
When you were utterly at my mercy, you relinquished your powers. You couldn't even protect your own woman. And now you think to defeat me? <laughs> Lord Dracula is gone, but his powers are still here in Valacia. Even you must realize. Devil forging. Indeed, with this the most forbidden of arts, a wisp of conjured matter can be transformed into a hellish devil. There are but two humans who possess this magnificent power. You and I. <laughs> yes, to our lasting shame. But I shed that evil power. Never again will I use it. Ah, but you will, Hector, and soon you have no choice. Without it, I could crush you in an instant. But that wouldn't be very satisfying, now would it? You deserve a most gruesome fate for the humiliation you brought upon me three years ago. Bereft of the power of devil forging, you cannot hope to pursue me. That is why you will reclaim your powers, and thence follow where I lead you. <laughs> but, in the end, the glorious vengeance you seek will not be yours. <laughs> Wait! Isaac! Claim that accursed power once more. Heed my words. I will hunt you down like the beast you are. I will have my revenge. So yes, we are Hector, and we are at the abandoned castle. So we are one of two humans. Who Devil Forge? We are the ones who are responsible for filling Castlevania with all sorts of hellish creatures. So all of the enemies that the Belmonts have fought up until now are our fault. And this is a pretty, you know, generic story. Revenge. Isaac killed our wife, Rosalie. We're gonna kill Isaac. It's it's pretty pretty standard. Alright, big guy starts off. We start off with a sword, because obviously we are not uh, a Belmont, so we don't get a whip. We do have a guard, which is not terribly useful, but... Alright, and we have a memorial ticket. Warps to the last registered save point. And we have a save point. And in this, the save point is a chair. Chairs are a very, very common theme in this game, and I do not for the life of me understand why, but chairs are a thing. This one's kind of cool, it, it folds over like wings, and you see feathers, it's kind of cool. Kind of makes me wonder what happened to the save points in uh, Limit of Innocence, you know. Where'd the ball of water go? Alright, so, doors will be uh, marked as we get close to them, so that you don't pass by them like you did in Limit of Innocence and not even notice. So we have two ways we can go. We can go left or we can go right. We're going to go this way for now. Because, you know, I like to look around. And whenever your HP bar just kind of randomly shows up out of random, that means there's a bad guy that you should probably deal with. And as you can see, the castle is much bigger here than it was in Lemon of Innocence. Rooms are much, much larger, much more non-conform. But we still have, you know, invisible walls. And we're going to look over here, make sure we cover all of our bases. 
Ow. And level up! And I'm sure this will play a role later. Um, in fact, I'm almost sure. So we're gonna go this way now, up these stairs. Because, you know, I like going upstairs. And we have a potion. Something fits into this door. So we have to unlock this door first. I was afraid of that. I knew there was one way to go that was not the right way. Oh well. That was it! But we got a level up out of it, so, you know, coming down killing all the bad guys, it works. So it just means when I finish this next area, I can just, you know, cut the walking from here to there out. Save room again, in case, you know, you need to save again. There is not an item duplication trick in this game that I know of, like there was in Limited Innocence, so... This game is going to be a little more... Let's say not cheating. And obviously we're only getting money from lamp posts and small amounts of money at that. Not anything major. I can already see something in the distance, because the draw distance for this game is really interesting. And we have two types of attacks. I haven't talked about it. You have uh, square does uh, regular attacks that you can combo. Circle does a heavy attack that will end the combo, but is stronger. Let's see. Skill, quick step. <clears throat> so we've learned quick step now. That's fantastic. That's actually quite helpful. And chaining the uh, combo into a different section with the strong attacks will actually change the uh, the nature of the attack. You can't just hit the strong attack, it has to be after uh, a regular attack as a combo finish. But, as you can see, combos are actually very, very effective. And swords are one of my favorite weapons in this game. But there are a lot of different weapons in this game. Uh, swords, great swords, uh, great axe, hammers, spears, um, wild memory. That's that we'll get into in just a second. Uh, there, like I said, there's a lot of weapons and the weapons actually function more like Symphony of the Night because again, we're not a Melmore. So, nice little throwback there. The wild memory we just picked up is for crafting. Everything in this game is crafted. In fact, we don't even have that ability yet. As you can see, there's a lot of grayed out sections on our own menu. So we'll be getting access to those things later. I love taking out multiple enemies with that that step attack. And what do we have here? We have another save room. Don't really need to save it right now. I'm good for the moment. So we're gonna keep going this way. See what we can see. It works so much better when I actually hit multiples with that step attack. Yeah, I was very, like I was saying at the very, very beginning of this, uh, I did this abandoned castle map. Uh, so now we have a map which can show us various directions, which shows us everything on this floor. Uh, I had done this game a long time ago, and YouTube just did not like the recording program I did. And it automatically down converted it to 240p. And so it made reading things uh, 
damn near impossible. So I... I just left it up because there was, wasn't anything I could do about it at the time, but now that I have better reporting software that allow me to change and uh, deal with YouTube's codex a little bit better, I wanted to go back and do it, and it, it kind of disappoints me because my original playthroughs of this game and Lament of Innocence were two of my most watched projects, and as much as I love that, it, it kind of hurts to lose all of the views and comments and everything, all the interaction, because uh, I had on Lament of Innocence uh, 60,000 views. Uh, on that project alone, and I have probably about that many on uh, Curse of Darkness here. So I'm going to be very disappointed when I uh, close this project down, or actually when I'm finished with this project and I will be taking down the old videos because uh, I'm basically trading videos with uh, a heavy amount of views for um, videos that have no views. And we have here, sealed by an unknown power, Hector cannot open it with his strength alone. We have a treasure chest that we can't do anything about. So first off, we have this room now. It's a green room. Green door. Let's see what's in the green door. This unearthly power, is it coming from that tombstone? How conscientious of him. He carved the instructions into stone along with the most difficult visualization. So, that's how badly he wants me to regain my powers. Very well. Heed my words, O oh great powers of darkness! Released him with the tortured souls. Let me infuse him with my life force and awaken him to the world of the living! Immaculate being! Appear before me now! Well, well. Devil forging, isn't it? Never seen that before. Quite impressive. It's enough to make your blood run cold. Who are you? Oh, my apologies, my lord. I should have offered an introduction. I go by Zed. I'm here for one purpose only. To purify this land of the pestilent curse which infects it. I see. You, on the other hand, are pursuing the other Devil Forge Master, are you not? The one you seek fled toward the chapel on the other side of the mountain. He made his escape through the back of the castle. What concern is this to you? He is the one protecting the curse. Ergo, he is an impediment to me, and to all those who abide in this land. I see. Very well. I, Hector, thank you for your help. Now, if you'll forgive me, I must be on my way. And with that, we see our first innocent devil that we have access to. Innocent Devil Infant Fairy appears! And we can name it, and I always name... Tink. As in Tinkerbell, get it? Yeah, I'm gonna have to come up with some names. So, Innocent Devils, we have... Innocent Devils, they change our stats based off of what we have equipped, and they use hearts as energy, so instead of using sub-weapons, that's their life. And they get experience when we get experience, and they also get another type of experience that uh, is based off of what we, what weapon we're using. Characteristics of the fairy type and some devils tend to float around the player. They have the ability to open up treasure chests. They can also restore HP or heal status elements. So the fairy doesn't really do much. Now, once we get some abilities for it, we have some commands. 
uh, as you see, heal level 1, and also open treasure chest. Dragon Crest. Crest made from the carved dragon bone, looks like it should be placed. So that's what we need to get into the door. And we have a healing ability now, which is good because it's kind of needed. So every enemy that we kill, they can now drop hearts uh, in addition to the items that they drop, like the bronze. They also give experience, and as we start getting farther into the game, uh, they'll start dropping crystals. And crystals are how uh, innocent devils will level up. And I don't... There we go. So as you see here, there's eat XP. Uh, how many crystals they've eaten and what their current XP is. Uh, their abilities that they have. And then, uh, as you see, a development tree. So they will change characteristics based off of what crystals they eat. And as you see, you have sword, axe, spear, hand, and mystery weapons. Uh, depending on how many of each one type they eat, will change all of their characteristics. <coughs> Excuse me. <laughs> From physical appearance, abilities learned, <laughs> and uh, secondary characteristics like what stats they can increase. So, yeah. Innocent Devils are an interesting familiar system to this game. So I'm going to get back to the, uh, the save room over here, which is... way over here, uh, and I'm going to go ahead and save it, uh, and in this episode here, where we are kind of done for now, at least time-wise, so I will see you guys in the next installment, where we level up, for one, and I will go ahead and make it off-screen back to the door that we need to use the Dragon Crest. So yeah, I will, uh, I'll catch you guys in the next installment. Till then, later everyone.